Hello, welcome to St. Peter and St. Paul United Church of Christ. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Thank you for tuning in and joining us for our pre-recorded online worship. And we are glad that you're here and that we get to worship with you and have this opportunity. Uh, I'm here with Joel and Mary Beth and Aaron Westermeyer, our video production team. We're in the chapel at St. Peter and St. Paul. We're grateful for their efforts to bring you this video each week, and uh, we're grateful to you for tuning in. We'd like to invite you to our in-person worship at St. Peter and St. Paul. We meet every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., and we're located at 3001 Queen City Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45238. We'd love to see you, so please feel free to come and worship with us anytime. As we gather together today, may God's Spirit be among us, and may we open our hearts to God as God encounters us in this very sacred time. Please join me for our responsive call to worship. God moves among us. We welcome your presence, Lord, no matter by what means you arrive. Reach out your hand, and I shall always be with you. We reach for you, Jesus, and trust that you are present when we fear or ache. Your presence, O Lord, calms the seas as it calms our hearts. May we rest assured that you are ever present with us, easing our worries as you love our anxieties into softness. Our first hymn is hymn number 67, O God, our help in ages past. Oh uh -huh. 
Please join me for our invocation. God, God of so many names, you command us to come to you, yet we are doubtful of our abilities to make the journey. We are so uncertain of our steps, yet we long to have the faith in ourselves that you have in us. Be with us and embolden us through faith to rise as we are called to walk with you and walk alongside those who need companionship. Show us how to be children of God who can set skepticism down and take up the mantle of a faithful presence. Amen. Sometimes our faith is great and sometimes it is very small. Sometimes we are faithful to God's calling and sometimes we wander onto paths that lead to hopelessness. Let us make our confessions to God and receive the assurance of God's grace which restores our faith and leads us to the path of life. Please join me for our prayer of confession. God, our gentle parent, bring calm to the storms that batter us and blow us off course. We do not need to walk on water. We need only to walk through our lives as whole and holy children who recognize that your love unites us, buoys us, and carries us forward to face miraculous challenges in a complex world. Help us to see through the clutter of daily existence in order to focus on what is most important, love, compassion, faith, and connection. Amen. Even when we doubt, God is with us. God walks beside us, through us, and with us in all that we do. Miracles are among us if we see ourselves with God's loving gaze. Amen. Amen. We come to our time of pastoral prayer. We invite you to bring all of your concerns and joys to worship today. There is a link right below the video if you'd like to share a prayer request with us. Uh, we would love to receive that and we would be happy to share your concern with our congregation in our weekly email update as well as in our in-person worship. And uh, there's a form. If you click on that link, fill out that form and, and send it submit it, we will be sure and share that with the congregation. Let us bring all of our joys, let us bring our hopes, and let us bring our concerns and our needs to God as we pray together. O oh, faithful God, we gather today in your presence. Some of us are full of faith, and some of us are not sure what we believe. Some of us can hardly keep from singing, and some of us can barely face the day. We gather because you have called us, because you love us, and because you are our God. We gather not because we are good or pure or holy, but because of our need. Before the world began, you loved us. Before you created us, you were faithful to us. And we as your people are thankful for your great and abiding love shown again and again down through the ages. You have never abandoned us, even when we have abandoned you. You have never forgotten us, even when we have strayed far from the path. We praise you, faithful God, for the steadfast love which has always guided us, for the promise which has never faltered, for the light which has lightened our way, for the story which has reminded us of those who came before us. For your steadfast love and mercies are new with each morning. We join together with the people of faith in all ages to give you thanks and praise. O oh God, as the summer days move rapidly toward the busyness of autumn, our attention is drawn forward. We begin to think about all that is coming, children preparing for the new school year, young people off to service, work, or college, return to regular work schedules, preparations for retirement, 
There are so many things looming on our horizons that our focus is placed on them. Be with us, loving God. Remind us to place our focus ultimately on Jesus, who calls us to trust in his mercy and care. Keep the needs of others in our hearts and minds, needs for healing, for comfort and friendship. Help us to reach out to them and offer our gifts and service in your name. We remember today, dear ones, and situations with our hearts and with our voices. And now in these next few moments of silence, we ask that you would receive all of the personal prayers that we bring to you. As you have loved and healed us, so we ask your healing mercies on all these whom we have remembered and named. We also ask your guidance and patience with us as we march through these last weeks of summer. Confident in Jesus' love for us, we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 10, beginning at verse 5. The apostle shares with us, Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your hearts. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Our second scripture reading is our gospel reading from Matthew's gospel, chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. 
But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of this God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, why did the students go on the boat to get their scholarship? And why couldn't the sailors play cards? Because the captain was standing on the deck. And what do you do with a sick boat? You take it to the dock. Well, some have suggested, uh, as we think about this uh, moment on the boat and out of the boat it, that uh, we read in our Gospel reading, some have suggested that the Apostle Peter is, in many ways, sort of the uh, archetype, uh, archetypal disciple. Uh, when we read about Peter in the Gospels, we are able to see ourselves in him, whoever we are, uh, we can likely and, and very probably see ourselves uh, in Peter and see Peter in us. Peter is like all of us when we stop and think about it. He's a mixture of faith and of doubt. Some days he's bold and he's ready to take on the world in Jesus' name, and other days he's uncertain. And he fails in what he attempts because of that uncertainty. In our gospel passage for today, Peter displays both faith and doubt in one narrative, in one incident. In our passage, we find Jesus has gone off by himself to pray. He has dismissed the crowds that he has been ministering to, and he is sending the disciples to the other side of the lake by boat. And much has been happening, and Jesus needed some time alone. But by evening, the boat was still far from the land. As Matthew says, the wind was against them, and they were battered by the waves. The, in the early morning hours, Jesus came to the boat walking on the sea, and obviously the disciples were not expecting that. They were not expecting to see Jesus walking on the water toward them, and they assumed the figure that they saw was a ghost, and they were terrified. Matthew writes, they cried out in fear. We can understand and relate to that, can't we? These guys are tired. They've been battling the wind all night in their boat. They're frustrated because they haven't arrived at their destination. And now they are afraid because of who or what they see coming toward them. I'll bet every one of us can relate to the disciples. Sometimes we are tired because we have been putting time and energy into something that we have to do or feel that we have to do. Sometimes we are frustrated because we have not made the progress that we had hoped to make. And sometimes we are afraid of the uncertainty of the future. We just don't know who or what is coming toward us and what to expect. And like the disciples, we cry out, either literally or from within ourselves. And as the disciples are crying out in fear and shouting, It is a ghost! Jesus approaches them with words of assurance, saying, Take heart! It is I, do not be afraid. May we hear those words today as we experience our frustration, our fatigue and frustration and uncertainty. Peter is the first to speak, as he often seems to be, and what he sees is challenging him to take a bold leap of faith. Lord, if it's you, command me to come out to you on the water. And Jesus invited Peter to come and walk on the water with him. Matthew tells us that Peter got out of the boat and started walking. For a moment, Peter was walking on the water with Jesus. That was Peter's faith in action. Peter was doing something remarkable, something wondrous, something he likely never dreamed that he would be doing, all because he had that great moment of faith. And Jesus blessed and affirmed uh, that faith, and Peter was able to take some steps out onto the water. Just think of it. And then Matthew says the wind came up and Peter lost his nerve. He became frightened. 
And he began to sink, and he cried to Jesus, Lord, save me. And Jesus pulled him to safety, and then Jesus said to Peter, You of little faith, why did you doubt? We might imagine that Jesus asked this question of Peter, not so much to scold him, but perhaps with a twinkle in his eye, trying to challenge Peter. You made, you, you made some progress. You stepped out on faith. You walked on water. But then the doubts came when the winds uh, came up. Peter reminds us that success and failure in life are often intertwined, and they can happen in our lives back to back, or we can go back and forth between success and failure, faith and doubt. Peter demonstrates in one instance the power of faith and the power of doubt. Peter believed that what Jesus was doing, walking on the water, was possible for him too. And for a few moments, Peter too was walking on the water. However, Peter also experienced what we all experience when the winds of life become strong and overwhelming. He lost his faith for a while, and he began to sink. Anna Case Winters writes this about our passage. She says, Jesus asks, why did you doubt? And the verb translated as doubt, she tells us, is the Greek word disatso, which can mean hesitate and signifies the kind of personal confusion or uncertainty that prevents action or commitment. It is a term that characterizes Jesus' faltering followers both then and now, she writes. Nevertheless, she tells us, there are signs of promise and progress among the doubting disciples in the second story of a storm at sea. When Jesus calms the storm in the first story, the disciples respond with wonder and they ask, who is this? And now they're responding with worship and they confess, truly, you are the Son of God. Do you remember the old Peter Paul Mounds Almond Joy commercials? Sometimes you feel like a nut and sometimes you don't. And in the jingle, the two candy bars were compared and contrasted. Almond Joy is made with coconut and milk chocolate and an almond in each, in each uh, bar. And uh, uh, Mounds bars are made with coconut and dark chocolate and no almonds. So sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you feel bold and faithful, and sometimes you're filled with doubt. Sometimes you're walking on the water. And sometimes you're sinking below the waves and you need to reach out and call out to Jesus to help pull you up and to bring you back to safety. Harry Chapin, uh, the great uh, singer, uh, songwriter, uh, wrote many songs. He had many hits uh, in his brief life. Uh, he unfortunately uh, and tragically was uh, killed in a car accident in 1981 at the age of 38. And in that 38 years of his life, he sold over 16 million records worldwide. He had 14 hit singles during the 1970s, and you probably remember some of those, Taxi and Cat in the Cradle. And, and, uh, and not only was he a successful recording artist and performer, he also dedicated much of his time and energy to fighting hunger, hunger in the world. He helped create the Presidential Commission on World Hunger in 1977, and in recognition of his humanitarian work, he was posthumously uh, awarded the Congressional Gold Medal in 1987. Fans of Harry Chapin have long mourned his untimely death and have speculated about the quantity and quality of music that he might have produced had he lived longer as well as the possibilities for more great humanitarian work that he would likely have engaged in. Harry Chapin once said, My credo is, when in doubt, do something. And that credo became uh, the title of a 2020 documentary about the life of Harry Chapin. When in doubt, do something, Harry Chapin said, that was his motto. That's what kind of uh, helped motivate him to act and to try to make a difference in the world. He even recorded a song in 1978 in which he uh, shared these words with the world. He said, I wonder what would happen to this world was the name of the song. And this is how one of the verses go. Oh, if a man tried to take his time on earth 
and prove before he died what one man's life could be worth, I wonder what would happen to this world. And those words reflect his personal credo. When in doubt, do something. Do something. Act. Move in such a way that the world is better and different and more hopeful than if you had not acted at all. Harry Chapin believed that we are called in life to act even when we are doubting. We can still take a leap of faith with the hope that something good will come of it. David Linegar tells the story of Will Willem and the former dean of, chapel, uh, of the chapel at Duke University Divinity School. And uh, William, uh, Will Willem tells of a visit that he made one afternoon as a pastor to the office of a lawyer in his congregation. It was just a drop-in visit, and Williman says he didn't know the man that well, uh, but he wanted to get to know him better. And Williman writes, it was the end of the day. I entered the outer office of his law firm. Everyone had left. All was dark except for a light coming from the inner office. He called to me. He invited me to come back to his office. I didn't expect to see you here, preacher, the, the lawyer said in a voice that sounded tired, but come on in. I was just about to fix myself a drink. Can I interest you in one? Sure, Williman said, if it's caffeine-free and diet. So he poured out the drinks. He offered Williman a seat and reared himself back in his chair, feet on the uh, uh, cluttered desk before him. What sort of day have you had? Williman asked the attorney. A typical day, he said, sounding tired. A day of misery, he said. Oh, I'm sorry, Will Williman replied. What was miserable about it? Well, said the attorney, my day began uh, with uh, assisting a couple taking action against an elderly father, all legal, not particularly moral, but legal. And then by lunchtime, I was helping a client evade his workers' insurance payments, legal, not moral or ethical, but legal. And the attorney went on to describe working with folks going through a divorce and intentionally bringing harm to each other. And the attorney was describing his daily encounters with the painful side of life, with the ongoing conflict that people often find themselves uh, embroiled in, people intentionally taking advantage of others, hurting others, all within the bounds of the law. What could I say? asked Will Williman. And the attorney continued, which, he said, helps explain why I'm in your church on a Sunday morning. Will Williman replied to that, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed, thinking what on earth I have to say in a sermon which might be helpful to you on a Sunday. It's not the sermon that I come for, preacher, he said, fixing his gaze upon Will Williman. It's the music. I go a whole week sometimes with nothing beautiful, little good, until Sunday. Sometimes when that choir sings, it is for me the difference between life and death. Sisters and brothers, why are we here in worship today? Because sometimes we are faithful and sometimes we are filled with doubt. Sometimes we are successful in what we attempt and sometimes we find ourselves failing. Sometimes we are in doubt and sometimes we need to do something and so we come to worship. Sometimes we are in doubt, our faith falters, and we need to receive the hand that is reaching out to us. We are in need of this ship that we call the church. We are in need of Jesus who is reaching out and who will pull us in when we feel as if we are sinking and all is lost. We are here because we are in need of hearing Jesus declare once again, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Sisters and brothers, when in doubt, do something. Reach out and take that hand that is reaching out to you. Amen. I invite you to join me now in affirming our faith as we say together the words of the United Church of Christ Statement of Faith in its original version. We believe in God, the Eternal Spirit, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father, 
and to his deeds we testify. He calls the worlds into being, creates man in his own image, and sets before him the ways of life and death. He seeks in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. He judges men and nations by his righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Lord, he has come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death, and reconciling the world to himself. He bestows upon us his Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. He calls us into his Church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be his servants in the service of men, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. He promises to all who trust him forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, his presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in his kingdom which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto him. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 337, Jesus Calls Us, or the Tumult. Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our lives, while restless sea, day by day his sweet voice soundeth, saying, Christian, follow me. Long ago apostles heard it by the Galilean lake, turn from home and leaving all for his dear sake. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden star, from each idol that would keep us, saying, Christian, love me more. In our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of ease. Still he calls in cares and pleasures, Christian, love me more than these. Jesus calls us by thy mercy, Savior, may we hear thy call. Give our hearts to thine obedience, Serve and love thee best of all. The gifts of faith come to us in many ways, and the miracles we witness are not always so obvious. May the manifestation of God's great abundance in our lives inspire us to generosity in as many ways as we see God's love unfurl.
Please join me for our prayer of dedication. Holy, Holy One, One, we thank, thank you for revealing yourself to us in ways, ways both, both big and small, and both miraculous and mundane. Use our gifts to further your loving justice in our communities near and far. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn number 529, I'm So Glad Jesus Lifted Me. Thank you for joining us for worship. We hope that this has been a blessing for you as we have met together. We hope you have a wonderful week ahead of you, and we look forward to worshiping with you again very soon. Remember, this week and always, there is a hand reaching out for you to pull you back in to the hope and to the joy of life promised to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sisters and brothers, as we go forth from this time of intentional community and ministry, let us practice replacing fear with faith and worry with a calm that is rooted in God's grace. May we more deeply connect with the freedom that comes from trust in something larger than ourselves. Go in peace and do God's work among all of God's people. Go in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. me mm-hmm.